I started the crosscut build by ripping a piece of three quarter inch thick Baltic birch plywood into strips at the table saw. And these pieces would make up the front and back fences of the sled. And to help beef up these fences, I glued two of the strips together to form inch and a half thick fences. Also, in case you're interested in building one of these sleds for yourself, I do have plans available that include all of the specific dimensions I used, as well as all the hardware and parts I used, and I'll have a link to those plans in the cards and in the video description below in case you're interested. After the glue had a chance to dry, I took the fence planks out of the clamps and then squared them up starting at the table saw, scraping off any excess glue squeeze out from one edge before doing so. Once I had the edges cleaned up, I first cut the back fence to length by cutting one of my fence planks roughly in half, and this was because I was actually creating fences for two sleds here, one for my main shop and one for the home shop, which I'll build later. I could then clean up the ends of the front fence, which I kept as long as possible, removing just enough material to square things up. While I had my stop block set to length for the front fence, I also went ahead and cut the double T-track I'd be using on top of the front fence to length as well and I had to cut off a bit from one end of the double T-track to make sure the screw locations worked out for my fin size, but this aluminum T-track cut really easily with my miter saw. Next, I could get a slot cut into the top edge of the front fence to house the bottom portion of the double T-track. And this piece actually helps to keep the fence straight over time, so I tried to keep the slot nice and snug while also making sure the T-track was just shy of the face of the fence so that it didn't interfere. Before screwing on the T-Track, I also went ahead and chamfered the edges of the fence at the router table, adding a heavy chamfer to the bottom front edge of the fence. And this chamfered area will give a place for sawdust to kind of pile up without it affecting the accuracy of the fence. Finally, I could get the double T-Track mounted to the top of the fence, and I pre-drilled the holes with a self-centering drill bit, then drove in some number six screws. With that, the fences were done for the time being, so I could get to work on the base of the sled, which I made from more 3 quarter inch Baltic birch plywood. To help the sled slide across the surface of the table saw a little bit more smoothly, and also to improve its wear resistance, I decided to add some laminate to the base. And when applying laminate to a piece like this, it's important to apply it to both sides to keep the piece from warping, and as luck would have it, I had two scrap pieces of laminate left over from some previous projects that were pretty much the perfect size for my sled base. After cutting the pieces to rough size of the table saw, I added contact cement to one face of the plywood base and the inside face of one of the laminate pieces and let the cement set up for about 20 minutes. Once the cement set up, I added some aluminum clamps as spacers and then got the piece of laminate positioned above the base. And it's important to get this exactly right before removing the spacers because as soon as the two pieces touch, the contact cement will bond permanently. Luckily, I had plenty of overhang on this first piece of laminate, so lining it up was easy. And once I had removed the spacers, I used a pressure roller to help activate the contact cement and give it a nice bond. I repeated the process for the other side of the sled base, but this time my piece of laminate was a much tighter fit. But luckily using these clamps as spacers allowed me to get the positioning really dialed in, and I ended up with a great fit. Next, I needed to get the laminate trimmed flush with the edges of the base. And I initially tried to kill two birds with one stone here and used a chamfer bit to both flush up the laminate and add a chamfer. Unfortunately, this particular contact cement has the tendency to really gum up during routing, and this left me with an extremely uneven chamfer because it was all building up on the edges of the sled base. So instead, I just swapped over to a flush trim bit to knock off the excess before trying to add the chamfer. After scraping off all of that caked on adhesive and flush trimming, I chamfered the edges of the sled base and then sanded the edges of the base as well as the fences, just remove any splinters and clean things up. Next, I could work on getting the miter bars added to the base, and I went with these aluminum miter bars from Rockler here. Now, if you're on a tight budget, you can certainly make these out of scrap pieces of hardwood, but these aluminum miter bars have some definite advantages. First, they're dimensionally stable, so they won't expand and contract seasonally, like wood runners. And second, these miter bars include these little nylon set screws that allow you to really dial in the fit with the miter slots on your specific table saw, giving you a completely slop-free fit. After dialing in the set screws, I set my table saw fence to match the positioning I wanted, added a few washers under the miter bars, and then added a few beads of CA glue to the top of the miter bars. Finally, I dropped on the sled base, making sure it was aligned with the front edge of my table saw and the fence, and then I added the heaviest thing in my shop, an anvil in my case, on top of the sled while the CA glue got set up. 
After the glue had a few minutes secure, I moved the sled over to my workbench so I could get the miter bars permanently attached. And these miter bars actually have three quarter 20 threaded holes on each of them, so I needed to drill matching holes through the sled base so I could run some bolts in. I center punched the holes to keep my drill bit from wandering, and then drilled a locating hole through each of the hole locations to transfer those hole locations to the top surface of the sled. Next, using a Forstner bit, I drilled a recessed hole at each location, and then followed that up with a countersink bit to remove the sharp edges from the laminate. Finally, I drilled an oversized through hole to finish things off, then added a 3 quarter inch long quarter 20 bolt along with a lock washer to each hole location. And the finished result is a pair of very well secured miter bars, and man did that countersink bit make these bolt holes look super clean. I also double checked that the sled slid well after adding the bolts, and I had a great fit with no play. Before getting the sled assembled, I decided to go ahead and add a few coats of my go-to polyurethane, Total Boats Halcyon Clear, to help protect the sled from wear and tear. And Halcyon is extremely durable, it's a water-based marine grade finish, and it dries super quick since it's water-based, and I'll have a link to it in the video description if you want to check it out for your next project. After the finish dried, there was one last thing to do before attaching the fences, and that was to cut two grooves into the surface of the sled to house a few pieces of T-Track. And this T-Track will serve a few functions on this sled, mostly as work holding while making cuts, but also for jigs I plan to build onto this sled platform in the future. I set up a 3 quarter inch dado stack on my table saw, marked out two locations on either side of the blade that were also equidistant from the blade, and then I could get the grooves cut, which went really smoothly. Next, I mocked up the fences on the base to figure out my T-Track length, and I cut the pieces shorter than the distance between the fences so that I'd have a place to remove the T-Track accessories easily. I cut the pieces to length at the miter saw, and then drilled and countersunk holes at the drill press, and <laughs> this was more of that T-Track I accidentally ordered from Rockler, which doesn't have pre-drilled holes, and I'd recommend ordering their universal T-Track instead, but luckily I figured out that if I slowed the drill press way down to about 250 RPM, these five flute countersink bits worked a lot better in this aluminum without gumming up the bits. Now, even with the three quarter inch thick base on this crosscut sled, there wasn't a lot of material left to screw into when attaching the T-Track, and the shortest screws I had on hand would have still run through the underside of the sled. Because of this, I needed to grind the screws down to a shorter length, and my belt grinder made quick work of this task. And I actually used the little grooves on the inside of the jaws on this pair of pliers to help set a consistent grinding depth, and I ended up with screws with the perfect length for this sled. When attaching the T-Track to the sled, I did add a little CA glue to help create a stronger bond, again because the screws had so little material to grab onto, and I was also really careful when driving the screws to keep the holes from stripping. Luckily, this impact driver has a small screw setting that makes this really easy to manage, plus this Baltic birch has a ton of screw holding power. With the T-Track installed, it was finally time to start getting the fences attached, and I started by raising my table saw blade through the sled base to establish exactly where the blade would intersect with the sled. With the blade location established, I could attach the back fence, centering it with the blade and flushing it up with the back edge of the sled. And I made sure to clamp the fence in place so it didn't shift around while adding the screws, and I also countersunk the holes to ensure the screw heads didn't protrude and scratch up my table saw. Finally, I could raise the blade and cut all the way through the back half of the sled, stopping just short of the front edge of the sled. Next, it was time for what is really the most important part of any crosscut sled build, adding the front fence. And if this fence is out of square, it makes the sled pretty much completely useless, so it's definitely important to take your time and get this dialed in. I started by flushing up the fence with the front edge of the sled base, clamping it in place, and attaching one end of the fence to the base, again pre-drilling and countersinking the screw hole. Using my longest square, I squared the fence to the curve I had cut into the surface of the sled, clamped the other end of the fence in place, and then drove in another screw. Now if you've watched any other crosscut sled build videos, I'm sure you'll know what's coming next, and that was calibrating the fence's squareness using the five cut method. And this brilliant technique was created by William Ng and has made dialing in your crosscut sled fence a breeze. So essentially this technique involves making five cuts on a scrap piece using your crosscut sled, and these five cuts multiply any error in the squareness of your fence, allowing you to more easily measure and then correct this error. 
And this technique does involve a good bit of math, and I actually found a web-based calculator that does this math for you, which I'll link to in the video description. So my fence was only off by about 7 thousandths of an inch over 24 inches, but I had specifically bought a set of feeler gauges just for this build, so I figured I'd put them to use and try to get the fence even more accurate. To do this, I clamped a piece of scrap wood in front of the fence, since I needed to move my fence forwards, and I placed a feeler gauge matching the distance I needed to move the fence between the scrap block and the fence. Next, I removed the screw holding that end of the fence in place, moved the fence against the scrap block, clamped it down and then drilled a new screw hole and drove in a screw. And this is critical as driving the screw back into the previous hole would likely just move the fence back into its previous position. After readjusting the fence, I repeated the five cut method and ended up with an error of roughly one thousandth of an inch per foot, which is plenty square for anything I'll be building. So one thing that as you can see I forgot to do when I finished dialing in the fence was adding more screws to the underside of the fence which just helps to secure the base of the fence and also will keep the fence straight over time. So with that the fence was dialed in so I could start getting the rest of the accessories added to the sled starting with a block to cover the area where the blade exits the back side of the sled. And I cut four small pieces of plywood using the sled and then glued the pieces together to form the block. While the glue dried on that, I continued working on the sled by adding the tape measure to the double T-track, and the tape measure kit I used, which is from Rockler, includes this little plastic insert which the tape measure adheres to, and this insert fits into the T-track. Now this thing was an extremely snug fit, I had a heck of a time getting it fully seated. <sighs> So much so that I just ended up turning off the camera, but I eventually figured out that cutting the piece in half and sliding it in from both ends made the process a lot easier since it reduced the amount of friction. Anyway, after getting the plastic insert added, I could add the peel and stick tape measure, but first I needed to figure out how I wanted to reference this stop block I'm using, which is produced by my buddy Jonathan Katz Moses. I was initially just thinking I'd reference the edge of the stop block, but I instead decided to make more work for myself and I actually cut out an opening to house the hairline indicator that came with this tape measure kit. After adding the indicator, calibrating the stop lock with the tape measure was as simple as putting a block of wood with a known measurement between the blade and the stop lock, lining up the tape measure with that measurement on the indicator, and peeling off the backing from the tape measure and sticking it to the plastic insert. And I'll probably actually widen the opening for the indicator in the future to allow some fine adjustment if I say change my blade, but as is, the measurements are dead on, and as you can see, I repeated the same process on the right end of the fence as well. With that, the sled was functioning great, but one thing I had noticed when making cuts with the sled was the sheer amount of dust coming off as I was cutting. And this makes sense as this saw pulls dust through the zero clearance insert plate, which is pretty much entirely covered up by this sled. I also used the dust collection blade guard with this table saw, so I actually already had a second hose running on top of the table saw, and I figured I could whip up a quick dust collection hood that would both make this crosscut sled safer to use by guarding the blade, but also improve the dust collection. I started by taking some measurements for the pieces I'd need, and then ripped a few pieces of plexiglass and plywood to width of the table saw, and cut them to length at the miter saw. Now I knew this wasn't going to most likely be the final version of the hood, so I just quickly assembled it using screws and these strips of plywood to give the screws something to hold onto, and then I could test fit the hood. And I realized at this point that the back fence was of course lower than the front fence because of that double T-track, so I added a few spacers there, and I also wanted the hood high enough to cut pretty much any thickness of wood that I'd typically use, so I added some additional spacers at both the front and back ends. Next, I laid out hole locations for the T-slot bolts, which would attach the hood to the T-track, and then drilled those holes. I also modeled up a custom dust port in SketchUp, and then quickly 3D printed it, which only took about 20 minutes. And after confirming the fit with the dust hose I used for the blade guard, I drilled a hole through the top of the hood to accept the dust port. Finally, I got the hood reinstalled on the sled, temporarily screwing it to the back fence just for testing, and then I made a few test cuts. 
All right, so overall, I think this thing works pretty well. Uh, it definitely keeps the dust down against the crosscut sled. A lot of it gets sucked up, so that's great. But there are definitely a few issues with this design. First of all, this plexiglass I had on hand was way too thin. It's way too flexible, so I picked up a much thicker piece of plexiglass. This is quarter inch. The dust port worked great, so I'm gonna definitely go with that. The construction method with using these plywood strips, it really limits the visibility, which obviously is a bad thing. So rather than doing that, I'm just gonna glue the pieces together. This definitely only needs one mounting bolt at each end. I'm gonna add a little T-track here so that I can have one of these knobs on each end. And the other thing is I really use kind of very similar material thicknesses like 99% of the time. It's either three quarter inch plywood or thinner like half inch plywood or quarter inch plywood. Beyond that, it's gonna be either like eight quarter hardwood or double layered plywood. So I think what I'm gonna do is make these sides a little longer so that they're seven eighths of an inch off of the bed of the crosscut sled to allow me to slide material in and out easily. And then I'm just gonna make a little spacer block for the front and the back. So that way when I'm cutting thicker stock, I can just put those underneath and it'll raise it up off of the bed of the crosscut sled and should work great. So let's go ahead and do it. I ripped the quarter inch acrylic into strips of the table saw, cut them to length of the miter saw, and then I could get the hood assembled. And I actually changed my mind after seeing the E6000 adhesive needed 24 hours to cure and switched to CA glue instead. But if I had to do this again, I'd probably use acrylic cement as well as flame polish the edges to get an even clearer finished hood. I had a bit of an overhang on the top piece after assembly, so I flushed it up at the router table. And then I drilled another hole for the dust port that I had printed. And as I mentioned, I planned to attach both ends of the hood with T-slot bolts, so I removed the back fence from the sled and routed a groove to accept a piece of T-track. And I used this super nifty little gauge from Rockler to set the fence location so that the groove would be centered on the fence, and I ended up with a perfect groove after a few passes. I cut a piece of T-track from a scrap piece I had laying around, drilled and countersunk holes off camera, and then attached the T-track after reattaching the back fence. And luckily the screws pulled the fence right back into place. Once again, I needed a little spacer for the back end of the hood, which I cut using the sled. And then I drilled some oversized holes at both ends of the hood for the T-slot bolts. Finally, I could reinstall the hood and test it out, and it worked great. And this definitely keeps most of the dust down and also keeps anything from flying up off the blade and hitting me in the face. The last thing to add to the hood was the safety block, which covers the blade as it exits the backside of the front fence. But first I needed to get it cleaned up and shaped a little bit at the spindle sander. I also went ahead and pre-drilled mounting holes for these super long four and three quarter inch screws, which I luckily already had on hand. And then I could get a little red paint in the form of Total Boat Elixir added to the block to really make sure people know not to put their thumbs on this thing. Once the paint dried, I clamped the block to the back of the sled, centered around the blade, and then drove in the screws. And I also threw on one of my stickers to really make the sled mine. Finally, I could raise the blade all the way to make the kerf cuts in both the dust hood and the safety block. Last but not least, I added some paste wax to both my table saw as well as the bottom of the sled. And let me tell you, this thing is like butter now. And with that, I could call this crosscut sled complete. All right guys, hopefully you enjoyed this one. I am super pumped with the way this crosscut sled came together. So again, I will have plans for this sled in case you wanna build one of these for yourself. So check out links to that in the video description below. Also, I wanna give a huge shout out to all of my YouTube members. I'll list them here on the screen. They provide a monthly support for me and get some behind the scenes content in exchange for that. I am super grateful for them. And if you guys wanna check that out and learn more about that, I'll have a link to check that out here on the screen. And last, while you're here, why not go ahead and get subscribed and ring that little notification bell so you don't miss any of my my future videos and check out this other video that YouTube thinks you'll enjoy. All right, thanks for watching y'all and until next time, happy building.